it is no news that Ibrahim Traore is a good order. He has given many public speeches and is loved by many. There has been great attention and excitement about his speech at the First Alliance of Sahel State Summit. The AES Summit allowed Traore to share his insights, ideas, and vision for the future. Traore's participation as a speaker highlights the significance of his viewpoint and the possible influence of his contributions to the summit's discussions. So, in today's video, we will tell you what Traore said during the summit. We will also shed more light on what the presidents of Mali and Niger had to say. But before we continue, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the African Connect channel. Turn on notifications too so you never miss out on our interesting videos. Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger formally established the Alliance of Sahel States Confederation on July 6, which was the day of the summit. At this summit of heads of state of AES member countries, Captain Ibrahim Traore delivered a historic speech that was both strong and inspirational. He highlighted the value of member state cooperation in promoting sustainable growth and stability throughout the continent, with a particular emphasis on unity, economic cooperation, and regional security. His speech focused on important objectives and plans to boost economic growth, bolster security measures, and advance peace and prosperity throughout the AES region. These three countries are dedicated to enhancing economic cooperation and security measures among African nations. Through strategic partnerships and collaborative efforts, AES aims to create a more prosperous and stable Africa for all its member states. Traore condemned terrorism, resource theft, and the pretense of independence granted to African states in the 1960s. He also clarified the significance of their uprising, which aimed to grant their different state citizens actual independence and fulfillment. Despite all kinds of manipulation and misinformation perpetuated by the enemies of the peoples, Captain Ibrahim Traore insisted, We are not going to tremble, we are going to face up to it, while expressing his delight at the solidarity achieved within the common space. He ended by urging all Alliance members to constantly prioritize the interests of their respective nations and the Alliance as a whole. The President of the Republic of Mali, Colonel Esimi Goita, also pointed out that the signing of the Leptako Gurma Charter strengthened the determination of heads of state to combat terrorism. He underlined the tangible results of the three countries' combined forces' efforts in their hunt for armed terrorist groups. Colonel Asimi Goida declared that innovative and useful policies had been adopted in the areas of economics, culture, communication, transportation, and mining for the benefit of the AES people. He commended the guiding ideals of unity and solidarity that now underpin the Alliance of Sahel States and restated the leader's steadfast will to turn the AES into a model of cooperation in all fields. General Abdurahman Chani, the president of Niger mentioned in his opening address the fierce determination of heads of state to reclaim their nation's sovereignty backed by this solid coalition. In addition to battling terrorism, General Chani said that the alliance's future structure will also resist all forms of external aggression, armed banditry, and rebellions. Bear in mind that there are rumors that Ibrahim Traore is to lead this confederation of Sahel states. Many people believe this because Burkina Faso seems to be at the head of every decision made. Some others believe Traore is the one coming up with all the ideas. Hence, he is the leader of this confederation. However, a confederation doesn't have a leader. Even though Traore might be a major figure in the confederation's leadership, cooperation and consensus among the member states will drive governance and decision-making rather than hierarchical leadership structure. But we can all agree that Traore would undoubtedly be the leader of this confederation if one were to exist. In a shocking turn of events, Captain Ibrahim Traore has said that he has evidence of destabilization orchestrated against his country by France and supported by Benin and Ivory Coast. Traore said in an interview in Ouagadougou, the nation's capital, that he had nothing against the Ivorian people, but did have something against the leaders of Ivory Coast. Traore declared that he disagreed with the policies of the presidents of Ivory Coast and Benin. Nobody, he said, could have told him that there were no French bases in Benin that were directed against Burkina Faso. He continued by saying that they had proof. 
He said evidence will be revealed that Benin is home to two French bases, directed against Burkina Faso. We have proof. Tracks have been laid, soldiers are equipped, he stressed. The military violated bilateral and military agreements with France after seizing power, claiming that the country's neighbor was not only trying to destabilize the country, but had also failed to combat terrorism. Traore claimed to have audio recordings of French agents in Benin, who play at the terrorist centers of operations and set up operations with them and help them to look after themselves. However, the French military explicitly denied the presence of military sites in Benin in a statement. The only permanent military personnel are the defense attaché and the cooperants seconded to the Europe and Foreign Affairs Ministry, added the statement. The statement claims that France has bases in the Ivory Coast, Senegal, Gabon, Chad, and Djibouti. At times, the Beninese armed forces seek the deployment of temporary and short-term operational training detachments, which are then sent to assist them. Take note that France refuted similar accusations as well in May. It is common knowledge that Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger want nothing to do with the French. The people of these countries likewise share this opinion, as demonstrated by their repeated large-scale demonstrations calling for France to leave. This is one of the reasons why most of them have been talking about the summit and why they support their presidents. It should be noted that the idea of a confederation was approved by the three West African nations in December 2023 in Mala's capital, Bamako. This was an attempt to bolster security. The foreign ministers discussed the great potential that a strengthened political alliance offers for peace, stability, diplomatic strength, and economic development. The formation of this confederation would be a major step towards greater integration in the Sahel region. It would allow the three countries to pool their resources and expertise to address common challenges, such as terrorism, climate change, and poverty. The Confederation will give its member states more security by combining their knowledge and resources. To counter terrorism or other threats, for instance, member governments can coordinate military operations and exchange intelligence. This Confederation will give Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger a stronger voice on regional and international issues. When they speak with one voice, they are more likely to be heard and to have their interests taken into account. Of course, there would be challenges in forming a confederation as well, but since these countries have gone through similar crises and decided to change history, this will not be an option. Assuring that the confederation is accountable to the people of each of its member nations is vital. Open decision-making processes and a well-defined organizational structure are essential for the confederation. Establishing a confederate parliament or council that represents the citizens of the member states is necessary to achieve this, as are avenues for citizen participation in confederate decision-making. The confederation must have a clear organizational structure and open decision-making procedures. To do this, a confederate parliament or council representing the people of the member states must be established, along with channels for public input and involvement in confederate decision-making. People are certain this confederation will work and will be of great help to the member states. Others do not buy the idea. It should be noted that not everyone is happy with these presidents who are trying to change the narratives in their countries. Numerous attempts on Traore's life highlight the difficulties he encounters in his role as Burkina Faso's leader. In the most recent attempt, gunshots were heard close to the presidency. Protesters assembled at a roundabout in the heart of Ouagadougou and vowed to uphold President Ibrahim Traore's government. The protesters claimed that earlier in the afternoon, shots had been fired close to the presidential residence. Due to these attempts on his life, Traore has decided to tighten security and increase military spending with the help of Putin. He has also been condemned by his Western counterparts to the point he had to suspend the BBC and Voice of America radio stations for their coverage of a report by Human Rights Watch on a mass killing of civilians carried out by the country's armed forces. Human Rights Watch said that the army had terminated over 223 people in areas where there were allegations of collaboration with militants, 56 of whom were minors. International media outlets, such as the Associated Press, covered the story extensively. There have also been lies by Western media that he has silenced his adversaries and eliminated his rivals. Traore has refused to give in to this. He also has support from his people. Do you think he is a good leader? 
do you also believe this confederation will go a long way to help these three countries? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Encourage us to continue making videos like this for you by liking this video and subscribing to the African Cage channel. Turn on notifications too so you never miss out on our interesting videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in our next video.